everyone and welcome to this morning's service an opportunity for us to come together wherever we may be to share in words music and prayer as we worship God be it as members of Fleet URC or Beacon Hill URC or regular or new visitors to this service we are gathered as God's church whoever and wherever we may be so let us bring our worship joyfully, knowing this. And now we prepare for worship this morning. Let us pray. God, we are busy people. We need reminders. We need help remembering what is important. In this time of preparation for worship, we will try to slow down our thoughts and be present with you, loving God. We will be still and be with our God. Faithful God, you stay with us through all the difficult parts of life. You have been with us in our silent prayers. For your faithfulness and love, for this opportunity to join with others in worship, we are grateful. Amen. Our call to worship this morning has a response, so if you are able, I invite you to look at the words on the transcript and to join in those in bold type. We join with your people in ancient times to sing together with exuberant delight and joy. We praise and glorify our unchanging God. Since time began, People have praised God, and we join their chorus of thanks and praise. How awesome are your deeds, O God! Let all people reverently join in a chorus of praise as they gather together in the worship of God. Bless the Lord our God, whose mercy is beyond our understanding and whose steadfast love endures for ever and ever. Amen. We pray together now and join in our prayers of adoration, confession and thanksgiving. Faithful God, we gather this morning in your presence those of us who come here often and those who have not been here before, those who are full of faith and those who don't know what we believe, those who can hardly keep from singing and those 
who can barely face the day. We gather because you have called us, because you love us, because you are our God. We gather not because we are good or pure or holy, but because of our need. We gather knowing that again and again we have failed to live as you would have us live, that we have not loved one another, that we have not loved your creation, that we have not loved you, that we have not loved ourselves. Forgive us, God, and renew us to be your people. Make us one and reassure us in our true identity as children of the one who is above all things. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our faithful and forgiving friend. Amen. Before the world began, you loved us. Before you had created us, you were faithful to us. And we, as your people, are thankful for your great and abiding love, shown again and again down the ages. You have never abandoned us, even when we have abandoned you. You have never forgotten us, even when we have strayed far from the path. We praise you, faithful God for the steadfast love which has always guided us, for the promise which has never faltered, for the light which has lighted our way, for the story which has reminded us of those who came before us, for your steadfast love and mercies new each morning. We join with one voice to give you praise and thanks. Our good news is this, the steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Jesus, he shared words of prayer with his disciples, which his church has continued to say throughout the ages. Let us, as have Christians down the years, Pray together those words he entrusted to us, his 21st century disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
1 Kings 19 verses 9 to 18. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you in your sight, for you are our rock, our strength, and our comforter. Amen. Many years ago, I used to be involved in, uh, in pantomimes. I usually played the comedy role, and once I even played the dame's sister. And in one scene, uh, we, that's the dame's sister and myself, um, had to both get into a single bed in the haunted house of Baron Chuckles. Now, I can't quite remember what his name was, but I'm sure you understand and get my meaning. The audience was made up of children, parents and grandparents. When it was the haunted scene, the audience would get really excited and shout out, it's behind you! Or they would cheer once we shooed um, the ghost away. Pantomimes are real entertainment narratives. And here in the Gospel reading today, 
we're also treated to one of the great entertainment stories of the Gospels. Peter inviting Jesus to tell him to get out of the boat. Doing so, almost immediately sinks and then cries out for a rescue. At the pantomime story, the disciples also think that they have seen a ghost on the water and alert everyone, loud and expect very loudly, and the perceived ghost that they can see, which is in fact Jesus. You can almost hear the anguish in the disciples' voices when they shout, don't try and walk on the water, come back to the boat. Now at first one can see this, uh, this comical picture enfolding, but in fact this story has many layers. Some preachers have seen it as a resurrection narrative. It could be the, e the image of the resurrected Jesus and many biblical scholars would take that view of the glimpse of Jesus as the true Messiah and the Son of God. Some preachers may feel that it needs to centre on the person of Peter, following Jesus wherever he went and the developing story of his faith. Some preachers may even focus on the disciples, chiding Peter, even contemplating following Jesus on the water, for all they can see is a ghost, something not of this world. Yet many preachers may take the image of the storm and the chaotic world that we live in and how our faith can be nurtured through such testing times. The story of the disciples at sea, battered by wind and wave, is surely a story which speaks into our circumstances. The possibility of being swamped by doubt and fear as much as wind and waves seems to be very real these days, whatever I have known in, uh, in a place where I'm called to serve. I hardly need to list all the reasons why that we all find ourselves in similar places at the moment. Who would have thought it that something small and invisible as an unknown virus would take hold and a pandemic would threaten us and toss us off the boat as it has done? A boat will normally keep you safe, but in fact, if one thinks as the boat of the church, as a community of faith, one might suggest that in our ability to all be in the same boat, we are all like Peter, stepping out, maybe unwillingly, and tossed overboard, but sinking step by step. And then we see Jesus coming in the storm, not as a ghost, but Jesus real and calm and holding out a hand. Yes, the storm tosses us around, and may plunge us into the sea. Yeah, the boat also is being tossed around and we must stay focused on the face and presence of Jesus to help us bridge these troubled waters. For the present time, our boat, the church building, is not safe to enter. Just as the disciples' waterlogged boat was only safe when Jesus entered it, and calm the storm. Yes, we all can fondly remember when we all shook hands freely, wrapped our arms around one another, stepped aside to let the small ones and the children run free in our midst, when we all gathered close over coffee and biscuits on a Sunday morning and sang our hearts out. And yes, I am afraid that the church will never be the same as I remember it. The church that I grew and my faith was nurtured. It's always been a place of community and kindness for me. And I do have a fear that the church will never be the same again. I do have a concern that some people 
Now they've experienced the leisure of digital worship in pyjamas and a cup of tea may not actually end up coming back to church physically again. I'm also concerned that the church will attempt to quickly get back to normal as humanly possible and that we will not allow ourselves to be changed by all that has been and that means that finding God through digital spirituality of having new ways of worshipping and nurturing our faith in a creative way as the Spirit has chosen. Now the elders at the churches are reviewing the situation monthly and checking when it is safe and you will be having a monthly, our monthly newsletter this month and just explaining it a little bit further. However, seeing the boat that we want to climb into is one thing. But the boat may be different than our previous boat. It might be a boat that can carry us over troubled waters and we all need to stay focused on Jesus. Jesus who will be a bridge that will take us safely to the shore. So in these days I do recognise the power of the storm. For me at least, I recognise that Jesus has been in the place, those unexpected places that I have just encountered, particularly digitally. And I've wanted other people to see the same as I've done and to follow. But that's been difficult because Jesus is revealed in different ways to different people. But this I do know that surely we are being shaped to be disciples of the 21st century. Jesus is still calling us to walk, not to sink, to be ready and willing to help others and to be ready for what comes next in the next phase of our discipleship. And like the pantomime, I know that the outcome will be hopeful and good. And there will come a time when we will be full of joy again. But until then, I will remain with my eyes fixed on the one who brings hope, truth and love. The one who can calm the troubled waters and the bridge that can go to calmer seas. And that is Jesus. So my friends, Come with me to the boat, the calm boat, the boat that Jesus offers and help us to bring others into that boat so Jesus can be the bridge, the calmer seas as we face the troubled waters ahead. Amen. We join together now to pray for those things that concern us and for those we wish to bring before God, trusting in his loving care and concern. There will be times of music between each section of the prayers, so please take time to be still. Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you so that we trust in you in a way that alters our dependence on everything else and allows us clearer vision as to the direction and role of your church. Remind us that it is your church at work, your work, your power and your kingdom. Lord our God, 
Let only your will be done. Faithful God, as we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the raging and the insecurity, the confusion and the bewilderment, the restlessness and the fear, let your calming and reassuring presence be sensed and recognised, bringing peace and goodness, righteousness and hope. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, come to us in the storms of life. When we let each other down, mishandle opportunities and come to the end of our strength and patience and bless us with the love that never lets us down. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, come to us in the stillness as we bring to you those for whom we are concerned. The things, big and small, going on in our lives that are worrying us. The moments when we find it hard to trust in you and your limitless mercy. Help us to come across the waters of our troubles to you. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, whose promises stand sure forever, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have been particularly mindful, as I'm sure you have been, of the events in Lebanon when the explosion took place in Beirut. This is a prayer for this situation. Isaiah writes, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Holy God, ever present, our hearts are once again heavy as we watch the disaster in Beirut unfold. We pray comfort for those who have lost loved ones and remember those who have lost their lives, commending their souls to your care. In the midst of this tragedy, we are mindful of those who are injured and of the many who are ill and of communities that are already struggling to address the many needs that are present. We pray for relief in these days of suffering. May our lives and our resources be a source of assistance, love and care. Be present with all who mourn today. Grant peace and renewed hope. Comfort, O oh comfort, your people we pray. Amen. And now let us have our closing prayer and blessing. Let us pray. Jesus, who calms the storms, enable us to see the way ahead, to carry us safely over the bridge 
and set us on a firm footing. Jesus, who calms the storms, enable us to see the vision you lay before us and capture your delight as we are caught by the Spirit's breath. Jesus, who calms the storm, enable us to keep focused on you with our body, mind and souls and to rejoice with you and others when we arrive at our destination. Amen. And may the blessing of God that is truly beyond all human understanding remain with us this day and each day. Amen.